Hey guys, how's it going? Sorry to have to do the intro and the outro out this way. Uh, pretty much I tried to do the intro on the way to Callum's, but the audio and video and all that stuff didn't turn out properly as I was in the car on the way to Callum's at that time. Um, but yeah, pretty much in this video, Callum will be talking about um, leather crafting more in depth than he did last time. Um, what tools he uses and pretty much some advice for anyone who wants to get into leather crafting. Um, besides that, pretty much he has also given me some armor that he made for a giveaway. Now to get into that giveaway, all you have to do is just like, subscribe and comment and also share the video. The more active you are, the more likely you'll win. So yeah. All right, now on to the video. All right, guys, so we're here at Callum's house actually today. Um, he's going to be running us through some stuff with leatherworking, some stuff that he makes, different styles, and um, pretty much some tools that he uses. So kind of like the information session that he did the last video, well, a couple of videos ago, but more in depth. But before we do that, I actually bought some leftover, um, pretty much some leftover Legion Energy. So yeah, we got orange crush, some cotton candy, and some blue raspberry. So yeah, let's see what he thinks of them. I'm looking forward to this because I love this stuff. I love how it's not marketed to super athletic people like most energy drinks and sports drinks are. They're marketed towards fat slobs like me. <laughs> and I've been enjoying the vanilla coke one quite a lot. It works really well. Yeah, right. my favourite's the watermelon. Watermelon. I I love watermelon flavour, so I'm really keen to try that at some stage too. Yep. All right, I'll try the orange crush one first. Hmm, that's really good. The smell immediately reminds me of vitamin C tablets. Vitamin C tablets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which isn't a bad thing. No, definitely not. I love my vitamin C tablets. It's definitely a childhood memory. That's great. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. It's not too strong. It's... Mm. And it does that magical thing where it's sugar-free, but that's so nice. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to believe half these things. They kind of taste like they got sugar, but they have none in it. Yeah, it's magnificent. And cotton candy... That... This, I, I really can't get over. Cotton candy, which is literally spun sugar. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and then this is the flavor of cotton candy. Oh, and it's it actually food. smells just like it. Wow, that's amazing. As Isaac said, what magic are they using? Yeah, I've got to completely agree. That is absolutely magic. Wow. <laughs> this is awesome. Mm. Oh, that's great. That's like drinking a glass of cotton candy. That's that's amazing. Okay, blue raspberry. I've never eaten a blue raspberry, so I don't know what to expect. <laughs> oh, but it smells so lovely and raspberry-like. That's really weird. Yeah, I know. The, it's, it's hard to put, unlike the other two, it's hard to put the initial flavor name on. Hmm. Smells like raspberry. And it tastes unlike anything I've ever tasted before, but blue raspberry is an accurate, accurate description of it, I suppose, but it's quite nice. I really like it. I could definitely go more of that. Hell yeah. And the cotton candy and the orange. This is really good. Well, as I said last time, this is in no way sponsored by Legion Energy. Not saying that we don't want to be. You know how to contact us. <laughs> so yeah. All right, now let's get on to leather working. Uh, so what are some of the types of armor and detailing and, and tools that you use for this kind of stuff? Um, types of armor, well, mostly leather. <laughs> um, the, oh, 
show you a set I've got sitting on my chair right here. Fly buzzing around me. Um, is a set of hardened brigandine. Brigandine. Just um, like the Minotaur armor that we saw last game. Last game. This is the Minotaur armor we saw last game day. Um, this stuff's in for a bit more adjustment because uh, I cut some of the. Everybody, I cut. I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> um, everybody messes up. I cut some of these a bit short, and so they didn't hold when I tied them together. So they come undone. Just got to do them back up. Um, that part here where it ripped, where this vest was originally intended wasn't intended to have the weight all these plates on so the seams aren't actually made to take it so just got to fix that up which isn't a big thing um, but these are uh, these plates I think it may even have been this one that I was making um, in the last video that featured me in it um, these plates I make from uh, buffalo leather called uh, I think the, the name of the leather is called Alaska um, cut up into the rectangles, holes punched, edges beveled, um, and then treated in hot wax, basically, and it ends up really hard. <laughs> um, instead of lacing it on, I could rivet them straight onto the base, which would probably be quicker, but more expensive. Um, I make the lace so that it didn't, didn't cost as much. Um, I do uh, wax hardened armor, which is some that I've just made here. Um, this is actually an elbow cup that a couple of hours ago, this was fully flexible. Now, not so much. Now it's nice and hard. Um, probably heated this one up a little bit much, but it's still good. It, because it does have a little bit of flex in it still without breaking, so it's not brittle, so it's, it'll still do its job nicely. Um, a pair of those. Uh, then there's a set I'm currently working on right now. Excuse all the mess and the mistakes that I've made that I'm still working on, so there's more to be fixed up. This is just made with 5mm uh, veg tanned leather. Um, I believe it was harness leather. So it's fairly good quality. It's quite heavy leather. Um, a bit of water forming to put the nice curve in it. And then um, while it's properly cased, um, embossed all the details in it, and then dyed it black, coloring in silver and going off the lines. But then I go back over and I'll fix those up and it'll all look beautiful. Um, Bit more water forming, uh, a bit more water forming for it for various other parts which will go together. Where it really is a case of soaking it in warm water, um, pulling it out and forming it, stretching it by hand, um, forming it over a round object, which I found very handily. One of these is a very useful tool for that. <laughs> uh, a toy that my kids don't play with anymore, so it worked really well. Um, I'm guessing that's the finished product over there. This is a this is just a pattern that I'm working on at the moment, which is pretty cool. Um, this was a, a prototype pattern that um, I modified to. To uh, get the pattern for the armor I just showed you, um, I'm going to be developing that a bit more and seeing what else I can do with it when I get the time. <laughs> um, other armor I work with as well in my messy little haven. Um, armor that uh, these uh, epic armory. Uh, Bozer bands, bo bozer, ba bozer bands. I, can't, I don't know how to say them properly. That they are a great piece, piece of armor, but the problem with them in our lap is that the corners, like on here, are too sharp um, and will damage weapons. Uh, I think we've even had um, some of our uh, lap weapons 
cut open by being caught on the corner. Um, so a uh, bit of work that I do as well is I wet form just, uh, I've got, oh, here we go, got an example. Take a regular strip of leather that I've dyed. You can see it was once a lovely yellow color. I've dyed it up to a nice brown. And then I wet form it around the edges of this and it becomes this shape. And then it'll fit on there nicely um, using the right glue, stick this in place. So hopefully never come off. And get the idea. That now won't cause any damage to anybody or anything. And because it's kangaroo leather, it's ni nice and strong. It, that's not going to wear out anytime soon. It's not going to break through. So, um, that's another great thing I love about leather is that you get it, um, you get it wet in the right, in the right manner. You soak it in warm water, um, various different leathers and different uh, tanning methods will give different results but when you've got the right one worked out you, it becomes like a sheet of almost like uh, plasticine or, or, or play-doh and you can form it into almost anything you want absolutely amazing so this is my little box of tricks that I keep most of my uh, important and fancy tools in um, most important ones would probably be um, my awl, swivel knife, modelling spoon, edge beveler, and my two favourite stamps for helping me to emboss things. Um, this one comes in very close as well for making nice neat stitching holes but with these and a good uh, a good hammer um, I've got a rawhide mallet that I like using um, these really do most of the work um, a swivel knife um, I use to um, good examples on here uh, once I've drawn this pattern onto the dampened leather um, it's much like tracing a, a pattern on in paper um, I then go around with the swivel knife um, and cut around all the lines um, then go around with my smooth beveler um, and make the knock down one side of the lines there so that they stand out nicely um, I use this one to get into tight spots um, use my modeling spoon to smooth it out and add extra effects and things like the little lines on the red parts there are done with the modeling spoon um, and that's basically how I carve out the, the details and patterns um, I do as many of the holes as I can with my punch because it just makes it so much neater. Um, the awl I use to mark out um, locations of things on the leather, to open up holes, to help sew things together. Especially this one because all these stitches here are under a lot of they're under a lot of pressure because everything's quite tight in there. Um, it started out as two flat pieces of leather. As you can see, the stitches here pulled the two curved surfaces well it's a straight line there when it was flat that was actually quite a curve more and it was more like that sort of a curve um, when I stitched it all onto this flat piece here it made this dish shape naturally um, and so these stitches here a lot of them didn't want to line up because it naturally opposed curving up but um, jammed there all through and help it to straight bring things into line and it curved it up nicely um, and beveler I use to round the edges off 
which are then burnished nice and smooth. A burnisher, I don't have one just at hand. Um, the burnishing I've actually taken to using a powered burnisher because it's just so much easier than continuously rubbing back and forth with a wooden stick. Um, and it's so much quicker as well, brings up a nice result. Um, the thread that I use is, there we go, there's a piece here. This beautiful little stuff here might not look like much, but it's five cord waxed thread. You could tow a car with that, you'll never break it. It's stupidly strong. And it's really good at ripping up my hands. <laughs> so I've got to be a little bit careful when I use it. Um, what else have I got here to show? Um, oh yes, here's some... It's a series of braces that I'm working on, which a little bit of playing around with dye is actually quite a, uh, a happy accident. The first time I made a set, of bra a set of these braces, I sort of ran out of dye before I was able to even out the pattern. But I thought, oh, it, it should be all right. It kind of looks a bit like a wood grain. And everybody who saw it absolutely loved it. And I got, immediately got a whole lot more ordered. So now I go a little bit more intentional to try and make it look a little bit of a wood grain effect. Just using light brown dye on a natural, natural leather, uh, veg tanned leather. Um, Moulded and hardened with hot water. So these will actually count as heavy armour in our lap because it's hardened leather. Um, I've uh, got a whole lot of straps to match onto it. Um, something I've got to do with these before I um, uh, before I hand them over is I'll be um, putting a sealer over top of it. At the moment, this is just the dye on in the leather. Um, by itself, it's as you can see, it's fairly light. The seal and shine that I use will darken this up a lot. It'll also make sure that none of the uh, dye will come out. It locks it in, it gives it um, varying degrees of waterproof. Um, it just makes them look really nice as well. Um, it stops a lot of wear. Um, yeah, it's just good stuff to use. Um, about the only thing that I'm not going to use a seal and shine on is would be these elbows because they were dipped in in hot wax so there's no way that anything's going to really stick to them now and because they've got the wax coating on it you don't need anything else um these are all dyes from mac lace leather which i've actually found to be pretty good dyes um there's a seal and shine that i use which is great um you can tell when someone's actually using their dyes because it's all over the outside of the bottles so you can get an idea of the colours. Um, also leather glue, which is stupidly useful. Oh yes. Also got a pack of gold leaf, which I'm going to use for gilding on leather at some stage. There are several projects I have in mind for this, I just haven't been able to get onto them. Always too busy. Um, these are all water-based dyes. Then there's uh, this one and two others, which I'm also using which are spirit based, um, also called uh, aniline dyes, I think they call it. Um, they have different properties to the water-based dyes. Uh, they stick to different things, they penetrate the leather differently. They have different um, water resistance, um, different ways to use them. Each has their pros and cons. I really enjoy using all of them because I get it all over my hands. <laughs> even when I use gloves, I manage to get my hands covered. It's just what happens. Um, the brass ones, I've also used for the braces, but I try and have matching 
sets wherever I can. Um, for riveting and attaching stuff together, there's a few different ways that I've got. Um, there's one which is using uh, Chicago screws, which is basically a, a little bolt and a nut um, with a flat mushroom head on it so that it looks like a rivet on each side. That just, these ones are fairly long ones. They screw them together um, through the holes in the leather. Um, a little bit of Loctite or even a bit of super glue inside there and that'll never come undone and you'd be doing very very well to break one of these those are stupidly strong um, another sort of rivet that I use uh, just snap rivets well I think you call them snap rivets um, double capped rivets where you poke them through the hole that one goes on the other side, tap them together with a hammer and little um, tap them together with a hammer on my tiny little anvil which I also can't see right now um, and they will actually hold extremely well. They're not as strong as Chicago screws but used properly they are extremely strong. Alright, some cutting things. Um, there's a lot of specialised and different knives that uh, you can buy. You can spend so much money on, on so many different tools for cutting leather in particular ways. It's utterly ridiculous and they're all beautiful and I want them all. However, they're not exactly needed. They would be great, but a lot of people just get by with a regular box cutter knife and they work great. Um, a trick that I found is get one that has the the clamp on the blade so that it doesn't move and there perfectly good leather knife. Um, in my list of favorite things that I listed before I missed one which I really shouldn't have but probably because I keep I, I missed it when I started leather working. Jewelers Rouge absolutely magnificent stuff vital it's just a sharpening compound really um, before I cut any leather up I just prep the back of a bit of scrap leather with some jewelers rouge and then just even even with a brand new blade that I've never used Drop it up on a bit of Jewelers Rouge. And then the cutting leather is just so nice and easy. Um, I drop up everything I possibly can on Jewelers Rouge. Um, I use it on, on my swivel knife almost religiously about every 20 or 30 centimeters of carving I do with my swivel knife. Um, I give it a quick pass over with the Jewelers Rouge again and you don't notice it becoming blunter as you're using it that quickly, but when you give it a quick strop up, the difference is between night and day. It's absolutely amazing. Um, another, uh, another one where I'd like to use Jewelers Rouge on, but it's kind of hard is a great tool is a strap cutter where you put the leather through and it'll cut you a nice strap in a straight line. It's a bit hard to use a jewel's rouge because the blade's on the inside and completely surrounded. Um, I've used this to cut many long bits of leather. Very easy to use. Nice little whoop at the end there as well. That's a nice two and a half centimeter strap cut nice and quickly and so much easier than the days of 
dragging this knife along a metal ruler, having the leather move and so there'll be a bump or a dip in it somewhere or the leather will stretch or deform and it'll just turn out terrible. Just rip it up with this and it's great. Um, another very useful one that I found for cutting up as well is just a good pair of leather scissors. Um, they can be quite pricey but definitely worth it because that is so much easier in so many ways than using the good old knife every time. Um, it's a lot easier when cutting thin leather like this bit of kangaroo. Um, if I was to use a knife on it, even a sharpened knife, there's a lot of risk of it moving, stretching, and your line, trying to cut a straight line will actually end up quite nice and curved like that. Whereas with scissors, just like cutting paper. Um, I mentioned before that I make my own lace, and this is the handy little tool I do it with. I just want to really show off doing this because I enjoy it. Um, little piece of leather, a hole cut in the middle. I've cheated by making a little tail, but yeah. when it comes to doing leather working, nobody really minds if you cheat because that generally means that you've found a faster and easier way to do it. And now that I've said that I'm going to spend ages trying to get this lined up and still not succeed. This is where I use my handy dandy. All. And being very careful not to stab myself or wreck my blade. I just poke this nice little easy tail through there which will make things so much easier for me. One eternity later. go and now finally I have it worked out and it breaks again <sighs> I don't know why it's doing that probably because this blade is very old and blunt but just from that you got the idea that this will give us lots of nice long thin lace um, skiver for when I want to thin down leather it's basically a potato peeler for leather. Which I can use to shave the back off of leather, I can thin it down, um, taper down the leather for um, belt making, for mounting buckles, um, for uh, if too many layers of leather are too thick to put a rivet through, um, then I can thin it down. Nice and easily. Uh, it brings up nice fluffy edges, but you can go from normal thickness right down to a fine point. Um, and that is actually quite a useful thing to be able to do. Makes a lovely mess, but everything in leather work makes a mess. Um, I know that the, once again, the real, real professionals, the master crafters, um, always use their skivers on a glass plate, because when you get to the end of your bit of leather and you run off, you can catch, I'm doing it on this, this poly board. Um, it's very easy to catch it on here, rip a chunk out of your board, um, blunt in your knife. You could have bits of plastic flying around. Worst case scenario, a bit could snap and fly off and get you in the eye or something stupid like that. Um, but on a glass plate it would just come off onto a nice smooth surface and it wouldn't damage anything. Trying to do, you're trying to start up leather working for yourself and do your own bits and pieces? That is a, it's how I started. Um, don't expect to do everything on the cheap. Um, you can get cheap tools, but they're not going to last you very long. But they are a good start. You can get around a lot of things. There's 
a knife is a perfect example. Like I said, there are a thousand and one different knives you can use for different um, jobs in leatherworking. This will do 99% of the work and it won't cost anywhere near as much as the, as, as the specialized knives. Um, this knife effectively, well, I, these are two relatively new purchases. This knife did it before then. Um, you can get cheap tools on places like Wish. Um, don't expect too much from them. Get yourself some Jewelers Rouge. Get yourself offcuts of leather instead of going and buying a whole hide. And do some practice first. Don't be afraid to get in, give it a try, make a mess, work out what you did wrong, and try again. Ask for advice. Every leather worker out there, that I know of anyway, is more than happy to help out um, however they can because if there's not people just getting in and giving it a try, then well, the craft will die. And that just can't happen because leatherworking is a immeasurably old craft that would be a real shame to lose. And it's definitely not something I want to give up. I absolutely love it. All right, guys. Sorry once again to be able to be having to do this outro like this. Um, I actually forgot to do one at Callum's. So yeah, uh, the internet problem is getting fixed tomorrow. Once again, the we got a second internet repair guy coming out to fix up. That's why I haven't been uploading this week. Um, not to mention Isaac is going to be back in the next video. So he and I have been organising some cool videos coming up. So yeah, stay tuned for all that good stuff. We will be bringing out some pretty amazing stuff coming up soon. And maybe even some more bucket list stuff on occasion. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell every time there's, not there's a new video, you'll be notified. And until next time, take it easy.